Hello, dear friends. Welcome to this evening talk brought to you by the Spiritist Society of Bournemouth and Poole Christian Spiritualist Church. I am Fabrício Assunção from the Spiritist Society of Bournemouth. For our presentation tonight, we are honored to have our guest speaker, Marlon Heikdahl, who will be talking to us tonight about the therapeutic approach of Joana de Angelis. We are also pleased to have Luis Grasso join us. We will, he will be available to act as necessary as a Portuguese and English interpreter. Tonight's event is one of our series of fortnightly talks exploring the psychological series of books by the spirit of Joana de Angelis, psychographed by the famous spiritist medium Divaldo Franco. Through Divaldo's mediumship, the spirit of Joanna has written hundreds of books during the last 40 years, including poemas and other spiritual works. Our guest speaker, Marlon Heikdahl, is a psychologist specialized in analytical psychology. He is currently studying sociology in London. Marlon is a member of the Medical Spiritist Association of Brazil, where he collaborates in the theoretical preparation of study coordinators for the works of Joana de Angelis. A very warm welcome to you once Marlon and to you, Luis. It's great pleasure to have you both here with us leading our study tonight. But before the study, let's go to our friend Lawrence Saville, at the Pool Christian Spiritualist Church for our opening prayer. Over to you, Lawrence. Thank you. <clears throat> Try again. Thank you, Fabricio, and good evening, everybody, and welcome. If you'd just like to still your minds just for this short time, link in with that divine thread which runs through all of creation, and send out our thanks, our gratitude. Help us to understand all that we have in our lives. Detract our mind from the wants, but look at our needs, for all our needs are met. We have faith, we have understanding, we have expansion of the consciousness, we have that personal growth available to us. We sit here residing in this physical world for this short time with friends and families and loved ones to help, assist and guide us. And we are all one family, all residing on one sky and all working our own ways to that path of perfection for which is intended for all things. So as we join together tonight to once more hear new ideas, new philosophies, new ways of thinking, new ways of understanding. We join in in gratefulness and humbleness. Amen. Thank you, Lawrence. Now it's my great pleasure to hand over to Marlon Heikdahl and Luis Grasso for Marlon's talks on the therapeutic approach of Joanna Chilangelis. Over to you, Marlon. Thank you very much, Fabricio. Hello, everyone. Firstly, I would like to say I'm very excited today because this is my first lecture talking in English. <laughs> I've been studying English for two years and I'm not fluent. So this is a very, very special moment for me because when I decide to study English, my plan was um, to, to do talks in English, talking about psychology, spiritism, spiritualism. But in my mind, this will happen in two years or three years more, not for now. And when Fabrice invited me, I said, OK, I will try to do it. So my apologies, because um, I'm sure I make many mistakes. My vocabulary is very poor. And the structure of my sentence are very simple. But the most important, I believe, is I have a strong desire to share with you my knowledge about psychology, my knowledge about spiritism. So I feel comfortable to be here. Uh, I believe we are among friends. And for me, this is the best place to learn something. And in the same way, 
I would like to, to be comfort to you too and make me questions if you need. You can interrupt me anytime. And if I can't understand or if I can't express myself, Luis is here to, to help me in some words or some questions. And I promise if no one you understand anything i stop talking in english i start talking in portuguese and louis translated for me okay but i hope it doesn't happen <clears throat> my subject today is the therapeutic approach of joana de angelis we are not going to talk about specific treatments uh, because all of those treatments are written in her books. Um, I'm going to explain key points to understand her approach. And if you are interested in, in reading specific uh, mental disorders, a specific approach, I suggest to you to read the book Existential Conflicts. Um, in this book, she's talking about drugs, violence, stress, anxiety, anger, phobias, in my opinion, is the best on this subject, even though she has several others touching in this subject. Okay, I have um, some notes here to, to organize my thoughts and to remember some words in English because even I'm studying English, I'm not studying psychology in English, so sometimes it's difficult to remember some words and I will use my notes, I'm sorry. Um, the first point I would like to, to explain is when we are talking about the therapeutic approach, um, we are not talking about a new psychology approach in, for psychologists, like a job. We have psychoanalysis, we have a Jungian approach, we have guest out different psychologists, and this is not another one or a new one. Uh, when Joana de Angelis started writing these books, over 20 years ago, she started bringing the psychology to the spiritism, um, she explained she was not building a new psychology theory. She was um, open, opening our mind to understand the, the spiritualism, the spirit plus the psychology, because psychology is the theory of the soul. So we have or we had uh, a big a big problem because in one hand we have the science the psychology and many times they don't talk about spiritualism about the spirit about god in another hand we have people studying spiritualism or studying God, and they don't talk about psychology. And this is a big gap, all we have. And when Joana de Angelis start uh, to write these books, start writing these books, she's trying to feel, or she's trying to help us to connect these two, we can say these two sciences, because both are very important. All of us need to study psychology. Firstly, to understand ourselves, because we have problems, we have many questions, we have um, different behaviors, we are trying to improve ourselves. So we need to understand what's happening in our mind, what's happening in, in this inner world. And in the same way, we need to understand the psychology to understand and to help other people. When we are in a church or in a spirit center, 
and where people are coming and asking us for help. But if we don't understand psychology, how can we help someone? You can't understand human being. People are suffering, they are in pain, and how they can change their behaviors. How do we bear the sadness, for example, the, the depression, anxiety, if we don't understand the soul, if you don't understand the mind, how can we help these people? For material problems, I think for material problems, we need to understand the material rules. But suicide, alcoholism, depression, they are not material problems. They are, they are problems of our soul. The soul is harmed, is in pain. How can we help these people? How can we help ourselves if we don't understand the, the spiritual rules or the, the rules of our minds? It's impossible. And because of that, Many times, scientists, philosophers, psychologists are very critical of religions, of spiritualists, because we are trying to do something, but we don't have a background. Sometimes we don't, we, we can't really help people. We are trying to do something, but it's not sometimes a strong conception about what we are doing. So in this case, I would like to share with you an um, example. Maybe with this example, uh, you can understand um, a little better. Yesterday, um, Louis and, and me, we were talking about psychology and how important the psychology, try, uh, exchanging some ideas and said, oh, maybe this example can be nice. So I will share my screen with you and I come back later. <laughs> One second. <clears throat> Can you see my, my screen? Yes. OK. So uh, we have, in the bottom, we have our troubles, our challenges, our problems. All of us have problems and challenges in our lives. And when we are trying to manage this, we are trying uh, to cope with this, we have some reactions. The psychologist reaction, the psychological reaction for these problems we call emotions. So anger or sadness or fear or happiness, they are um, the reactions, the emotional reactions, trying to, to cope with the world, trying to manage um, the situations and how I feel, what I have to do, uh, or what I can do in that moment. All of us um, uh, has, have these this emotions they are very important in our life. But if you don't understand the psychological approach, you think anger, for example, is something bad, and you have to forget your anger, you have to breathe and, and let go. But it's not true. This is a, a, a very simple conception about emotions. The same sadness. 
when we see some people, oh, he's sad, okay, but we don't know what we have to do with someone when that people is sad and say, oh my God, put a smile in your face. The life is so wonderful. But you are not helping that people. When we are living these emotions, we have a psychological structure between the world, the inner world, and the, the out, outer, how can I say inner and outer world? Probably. Between us and the world, the challenge, the problems. And the point is, the relationship with this world, these problems, and our emotions is through the ego so depends how the ego understand your himself depend the ideas i have about myself i will have a reaction a or b i feel anger or i feel fear or i will i will do this or i'll do that so the point is Everyone can be, can, can have the same problem, but we can have different reactions, different reactions or different intensities because depends the ego, who I am, what I think about myself, how I understand myself or how I, how I understand the world or, or the people or the relationships depend my view my point of view to to feel anger sadness fear or happiness so this is an important point because we stop trying to change the world is not the problem is not my son the problem is not the drugs the problem is not my wife the problem is not my computer the problem is me and th the idea is 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 the way is is my reaction is how i feel is not outside of me it's about me when i'm angry this is talking about me when I'm sad. This is talking about me. And the psychology try to help people to stop talking about the world, to think about their selves. If you don't understand this, you can help people to pay attention or to look out their selves. And you do the opposite way and you are not helping. But the, the second point is, if you learn how to manage your anger, you can have different ways, a good way and a bad way, we can say, <laughs> simple. Um, a good way is when you, you learn to use your anger and you have we call lucid action. You can do something, and sometimes we only do something when we are angry. Sometimes we are not able to do something when we don't feel this anger. But if you don't know how to cope with this anger, you can have the violence. This is two opposite sides and the same point in your life. If you know and if you understand about anger, you can have a lucid action or you can be a violent person. It's interesting because the big personalities in the world, like Martin Luther King Jr., or like Mahatma Gandhi, or Jesus Christ, all of them felt 
anger, but they could use this anger to have lucid actions. So this is very important because anger is an energy to, to, to improve in you, to help you to do something. To, uh, the anger say what you have to do if you understand yourself. The sadness is the same. When you know about sadness, you can have a, a good reaction we call introspection. But if you don't know and if you don't understand, you have a depression. This is the, the different, the opposite sides, the same emotion. Because when my mom died, if my mom died, I feel very sad. And this, uh, how I, I understand the life, how I, how I understand myself, how I understand the world, this can be uh, depression. And I stop thinking about my life. I, I don't feel happy anymore, never more. Or this experience um call me to my inner world for introspection oh my god i lost my mom i never realized i could lose someone but with introspection i learned something because i lost my mom now and i have a father i have my sons i have my wife i have my husband my parents so now if I learn from the introspection, I change my behavior. The sadness helps people to change their behaviors. The anger, the anger helps people to have lucid actions. But if you don't know, you are violent, violent. You, you feel depression, fear is the same. I hope you are enjoying these ideas. I can't see you, but I hope you are enjoying. If you don't know how to manage your fears, if you know, you can be, uh, you can feel prudence, uh, prudence behavior. You think better before doing something. This is the fear in our life. But in the other side, the anxiety is start with the fear. So anxiety is probably the biggest, uh, the biggest problem in our world and talking about mental disorders. So if we don't know how to cope with our fears, we, we, we develop the anxiety and happiness. Is the same because sometimes you can feel enthusiasm but sometimes you can feel euphoria is different euphoria and sometimes it's okay but this euphoria we are talking about is when you are trying to feel something but you didn't do something to feel good so we are drinking alcohol, we are using drugs, we are buying clothes, we are doing many different things to feel this false happiness. Euphoria, euphoria is a false happiness. It's not true because you didn't build something to feel this happiness. So when you don't understand yourself, you you go to this this side the problems euphoria anxiety depression violence and i could explain many other problems and disor mental disorders uh, from our emotions so i i tr uh, i brought this let me me hide Where are you? I think it's here. Stop screen. Yes. So I brought this, this, 
scheme to show you how important it is I can see my my one second I can see the clock okay yes so I brought this to show you how important it is for us religions or a spiritualist person understand the psychology because if you don't understand you are not helping people but in the other side when Joanna Jangelis war uh, was bringing the psychology to to the religion spiritism she was saying you have to study the psychology to to behave better to understand yourself so this is the biggest point because we are not psychologists we are not expert in this subject so what we have to do for me when i'm trying to read her books i i understand ops i need to understand psychology if i want to talk about human being if i want to help people i need to study psychology is not as a job to study psychology is not uh, in the university but is to understand who we are who the others are and to understand how we change the behavior how you manage our feelings how you you change our mind and when she is saying you need to study psychology i would like to offer some some ideas about what we can study what is the the main points to understand the psychology and after if we have time i would like to bring everything together the the spirit concept with the psychology approach okay so i would don't we have questions do you think it's okay and, until now with no questions coming up sir in fact the opposite people are complimenting you on your delivery of english oh thank you because if there's no question probably no one understand anything or <laughs> okay I think quite the opposite, Marlon. I think everybody is thoroughly enjoying it. Oh my God! Thank you very much. Uh, so, I would like to introduce you. If you are not psychologist, I would like to introduce you uh, three uh, big ideas, or we call in psychology three big forces. The first one was the psych psych psychoanalysis the the most important um man was i'm sorry we have a question oh. so the question is Marlon, if self knowledge is the key to mental and spiritual health how do we promote this oh my god could we have three or four hours more <laughs> 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 this is impossible to answer i'm sorry jamie but it's jamie jamie the name is jamie jamie yeah jamie, jamie i'm sorry jamie but this is a so important question i agree with you but this is is uh, another another subject because uh for me this is the main point in the religion <clears throat> the catholic church or most of the Christ, Christi, christianity or christian approach a christian christianity christianity understand um jesus christ in a different way that psychology understands jesus christ and when we are trying to to study um psychology we can come back to the gospels for example and we can see 
all the time Jesus talking about self-knowledge. But if we don't understand, we don't understand Jesus Christ and you do his speech, uh, uh, like rules you have to do, you don't have to do. It's, it's poor. It's not about that. It's completely psychological, his approach. So, um, but to, to talk about self-knowledge, we need to use more conception, more concepts from the psychology, like ego, shadow, personas, or self. Uh, it's impossible to explain now, okay? But I'm saying, I'm sorry, the, your question is very important, but I don't have time and then it's impossible to, to answer you now, okay? But this is very, very, very important. <clears throat> so I was talking about the three biggest forces in psychology. The first one uh, is a Freudian theory, psychoanalysis. Freud, um, Freud started his, his lectures or his job is studying hysterical women. Hysterical women was people, especially uh, women with disease, uh, for example, they couldn't talk more or they couldn't walk. In one specific moment, they stopped walking. They stopped talking. But if you were trying to understand what was happening in the body, nothing was happening in the body. And they start to understand the point is not the body. The point is the mind. And he start to, to talk about the inconscient. The inconscience. Louis is correct. Inconscious. Unconscious. Unconscious, I'm sorry. I hope you understand unconscious. It's something that I'm not aware. I don't know about myself. It, this is a biggest point because I think I know everything about myself. I think I understand completely who I am. But Freud, more than a hundred years ago, said, oh, stop. You think, but you don't know. You don't know who you are. And we can understand this with our reactions. Sometimes we have reactions or we have symptoms. And you say, what I'm doing this? I wouldn't like to be this person. I wouldn't like to behave this way. But I do. I can't change. Or sometimes I change this behavior and appear another behavior. But no one is what we would like to be. This is the unconscious. There is something bigger than us. There is something bigger than the ego, bigger than my mind. And he starts these studies and he opened another big door, sexuality. This is another big problem for us because when I'm eating, when I'm buying clothes, when delivering lectures, he said, your sexuality is there. Everything in Freudian approach is sexuality. And this is very difficult to talk today. Could you understand what is to talk about sexuality 100 years ago? This is a very interesting point hard uh, hard to understand some conceptions to accept but the psychoanalysis is a very important theory nowadays very important to understand many behaviors but this is one psychology can you understand me this is one psychology after freud for example we we had jung Jung, uh, he knew Freud, but he said, oh, I don't agree completely with your theory because the sexuality is one point, but we have other points. For example, he was talking about the collective unconscious and 
he said, I don't know if God exists or not. I know every human being has a psychological representation of God. So Freud was a pessimist. He had a, a, a different background. Jung was a religion person and he, he studied about religion, for example. He said, uh, there is an upper instance that controls and administrates the human being. He was talking about the true self. There is something uh, special or divine that manage our behavior. It's, it's completely different from Freud. And this is the, 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 the first force, the psychoanalysis with Jung, Freud, Melanie Klein, and different authors, but all of this group are psychoanalysis. Do we have a question? Yes. Um, a question that has come from Sue. She says, what advice would you offer to anyone facing difficulties in today's world where their sense of normal life has gone and cannot be returned to, and so they are facing great uncertainty? Luiz, could you help me? Yeah, okay, I'll translate this. Então, qual é o conselho que você poderia dar para uma pessoa que está enfrentando dificuldades no dia, no mundo de hoje, em que elas perderam o senso de vida normal, né? E não conseguem voltar para esse é, sentido de vida normal, né? E, portanto, eles estão, então, enfrentando, assim, uma grande incerteza. I'm sorry, Sue. I, I don't understand what is um, their sense of normal life has gone. Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, we are talking about a specific problem. Sentido de, sentido de vida normal uh, has yes. gone, desaparecer. I, I will ask you, Sue, if you don't mind, to, to explain better your question and I come back trying to, to answer, okay? because I don't understand what you mean. The second big, uh, the second import force in psychology is the behaviorism. The behaviorism was happening in the same time than Freud in other, uh, uh, in other space. John Watson was the, the, the first man to study the, the behavior and it's completely different approach because Freud was trying to, to understand the human being using the unconscious. And Watson or after Pavlov or Skinner was trying to understand the human being through the behavior. It's completely different. It's completely different approach because uh, I wrote a, a point here to, to show you. Psychoanalysis was focused on understanding the unconscious motivations that drives behavior. Behaviorism is studied the conditioning process that produce behavior. So it's something that I learn. You do this all the time with me and I learn to do this. And if you hurt me all the time, I stop doing this. It's the conditioning process. Obviously, I'm sorry, it's, it's much complicated than that, but I'm trying to explain the idea. They are not talking about mind. They are not talking about unconscious. They are not talking about sexuality. They are saying, what I do with you, constantly you learn or you avoid. And Skinner had um, a very impactful sentence. He said, give me 10 children. And I do one engineer, one doctor, one psychologist. I do everything I want. <laughs> it's strange, but his idea is I do because I can, I can manage 
their behaviors and I can do everything I want. So this is completely different and this is the second approach. And in opposition, can I say opposition? Being in opposition, we had the third force in the end of the 20th years, 20th century, 20th century with Karl Rogers and Abraham Maslow. They call the humanist psychology. So if you're trying to understand the human being, you need to learn a little about psychoanalysis. You need to learn a little about behaviorism. And you need to learn a little about humanist approach because Carl Rogers said, everyone in the beginning is good. And the problems, the social problems, and this, the other difficult, the, the disease or illness or everything we have is the consequence to, to go away or to go from away, I can't explain, uh, to distanciar. You have to go, go from. To go from, yeah, to go away from, to go away from our nature, because in essential the human being are good. So, three different, three different approaches, completely different in opposition sometimes, and I could talk about ten different approaches. My question is. Who is the right, the sexuality, the behavior, or the idea about person who you are a good person? Who is the right? Because Freud can explain you behave this way because of your unconscious, because of your sexuality, everything. Skinner can say, you behave this way because of the conditioning behavior, da 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 da. And Carl Hodges will explain completely different. Who is the right? And the point is, all uh, every theory in psychology works. Everyone has patients. They are helping people. Who is the right? And this is the best point for us. When uh, Joana Gangelis was talking about psychology in, in, in the spiritualism, in the spiritism, she offers the concept of spirit to psychology. So in the, in the same way, she was bringing to some was, some, to, she was bringing something for us, spiritualist people, but in the same way, she was offering something for psychologists because she was saying, if you don't understand the concept of a spirit, you can't understand the human being. You'll be fighting because sometimes you believe in CBT, sometimes you believe in psychoanalysis, sometimes you believe in different approaches. And if you don't study, if you don't understand the soul, the spirit, you can have a dialogue between psychologists. You, can, you can't put everything together to understand the human being. This is a little complex to explain. I try, and if it doesn't make sense, you tell me. But Freud tried to explain or try to understand the human being when the, the person was born. Skinner tried to understand the human being when the person was born and the same for Maslow. But when we understand the concept of a spirit, when we understand reincarnation, for example, we understand this person 
doesn't start when they when he was born he started before in other time with this concept you can bring everything together you can understand because the spirit is the structure is the main point is the spine and the spirit has behaviors has conditioning uh, behaviors conditioned conditioned behaviors has an unconscious unconscious has feelings has sexuality has everything but if you don't have this spine if you don't have one big idea you can't put everything together and i believe because of that in psychology we are fighting sometimes we are fighting with psychiatric sometimes we are fighting between psychologists sometimes we are fighting we are fighting with religions because we don't have a common idea the common idea among all psychology all psychologies is the spirit so when joanna jangelis was talking about that concept and bringing to us the the spirit the soul and explain in psychological terms psychological approach she is in the same time teaching us religious people to understand the human being but she is teaching the psychologists neurologists psychiatrics to understand the soul we need this connection to understand the human being and to maybe to my conclusions <clears throat> i i was thinking today about this point when we bring the spirit to understand the human being we open many doors many rooms all of this are our the lecture or the or the book to think about because we can talk about reincarnation with reincarnation we can understand better memories we can understand better behaviors we can understand better disease everything change for a doctor for example or a psychologist when we understand the concept of reincarnation when we understand the concept of spirit or when we understand the concept of spiritual influence this is amazing because when we study spiritual influence we can understand the mental disorders in different way is not because everything is a spiritual influence but you understand some some patients they 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 don't have good results taking medicines because sometimes we are talking about spiritual influence and some people are in the church thinking about the spiritual influence but they need to take medicines so there's a relationship between both and we need to study everything together so uh, i'm thinking how important it is for us to study psycholo psycholo psychology and how important it is for psychologists for doctors therapists to study the spirit to bring everything together but i will try to explain how i think this can happen um do did we have a question lori yeah that's a question that comes <clears throat> from jamie he says if i understand you correctly you are talking about the fourth spiritual dimension of health without which we are not a whole person 
Mm. Yes, Jamie, this is the fourth um, dimension of health. But the point is, many times, this fourth force uh, today is separate. How can I say divorced? Separate. 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 That's how to separate. Of the, the science. And I can't, uh, I can't understand what happened in England because I'm new here. I can understand what happened in Brazil with the, the, this spiritual dimension because uh, when in Brazil we start to talk about this fourth dimension of health, this fourth force, force in psychology, uh, we start talking about spirituality without psychological concepts. We start talking about spirituality without understand the medicine, without understand psychiatric, without understand important points for com better comprehension of human being. So for many doctors or scientists or universities today, uh, the, this spiritual dimension today how can I say, Luiz, caiu em, uh, eu queria dizer assim, é desacreditado, está desacreditado. Yeah, the people don't be, doesn't believe it anymore. So. People doesn't believe yeah, it anymore. It's discredit. It's discredit. Discredit, exactly. It's discredit. It's discredit not because it's not true, but because many people are talking about this spiritual dimension without talking about this psychiatric dimension or psychological dimension or medical dimension the human being is everything together so i'm trying to convince you that to 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 have a space in the university to have a space in academy, to have a space everywhere. We need to put everything together to show for these people that these concepts are very important to understand human being. I have an analogy. Do you understand analogy? Yeah. I have an analogy with the spiritual dimension, and I would like to share with you. Let me see if I wrote in some place. Um, yes, here, I was thinking maybe we, today is the age of the spirit. But to understand the age of the spirit, I would like to compare the spiritual reality with the neurological reality. Do you understand what I mean? The neurological reality happened in our world many years ago. We couldn't believe the brain was so important to drive our life. In one moment, we believe the heart was the, the biggest, the most important part in our body. We couldn't believe how complex or how important the brain was. This we are talking about 50 years ago. And when they start to talk about the brain, many people didn't believe. It was ridiculous, the idea that everything we do happen in our brain. It's ridiculous, this idea. And they had many theories trying to explain how important the brain is for us. Today, uh, a teacher, a doctor, a psychology, a good teacher, a good doctor, a good psychology, everyone use this neurological reality, the, 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 this knowledge to improve their abilities, to improve their jobs. Uh, if you have a teacher and, and he understand about how the brain works. They can offer better classes. They can do something different. 
a, a doctor or a psychologist, when we study about the brain, we change our perception about human being. We change our approach. This I call the neurological reality. No one more say, no, I don't believe in the brain. This neurological approach is, is ridiculous. If you say this, you uh, is the problem. You are the problem. No? In my mind, we have to work to create the spiritual reality in the same path in the same way the neurological reality. The geneticists, the trainers, a father, a mother, they will behave different when they understand the age of the spirit. Because when I have two sons, I say, but I do exactly the same and how they behave completely different. You can't understand this if you don't understand the spirit. Or can you understand why a child with three years old has a cancer? It's, it's so hard to understand, trying to understand the biological system. You can't understand if you don't understand, if you don't study the spirituality, the spiritual reality. And I believe if we do, if we do our homework, if we study everything together, the spiritual approach can be um, more credibility. How can I say? Credibility, credibility. Yes, credibility. Yes, give you more credibility. The doctor will you believe this because he has many patients from that church and they 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 become better they change their lives and i said i don't know what they do in that church but i th uh, i had many patients with the same problem than you and they are better now maybe you could see this is when 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 can change when can show what we can do but we can't change a society with religion, without science, without psychology, without medicine, without psychiatric, everything together. So my idea is the age of the spirit become with or start with people doing a good job, showing how the spiritual approach or the spiritual um, knowledge is not simple, is not, uh, how can I say, is um, primario, primitive? Or yeah, primitive, yes. Primitive. Because sometimes our speech is primitive. We're talking about... Um, Disor mental disorders, but we don't know what we are talking about. Depression, no, you have to think uh, in, in God, you have to pray, you have, oh my God, you don't understand about psychology, you don't understand about uh, mental disorders, please stop. Because when one doctor listens to you talk in this way, we have, uh, we are showing the, the bad approach in, in spirituality. So I believe the age of the spirit is start with universities, obviously, but start with church, with spirit centers, with everyone in religions or in spiritualism. It start psychology, psychiatric, self-knowledge, this approach to do something, uh, to do a good job to show to the world the spirit is not something simple, is not something superficial, is, is like the brain, very complex. We need to study more and we can change our society, but we need to start or to improve this process. 
this is my idea or this is what um, what I believe and I'm happy to share this with you. Um, it's, it's a short time we have, so I, I can say I'm sorry again because sometimes we could explain better something, but I think I can I can explain some ideas. I hope you understand what I mean. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, I have to say you have done a great job speaking in English, a lot better than I could have done. And I have been here a lot longer than you. So well done for, for facing the challenge. Um, we have got loads of comments and questions coming up on Facebook. Um, so going back to Sue's question, she explained and clarified a little bit more what she meant. So just reading out to you, I meant where their life has changed so much from what they knew as the everyday routine, which is what we call their normal life. Example, if they no longer travel easily, they, there has been great social and economical impact on their lives, for instance. This means that we cannot return to the old way of their lives. What advice could we offer? Ah, uh, okay, Sue. This is a good question. And all of us are, are, are living this challenge. Uh, the world is changing. And in Jungian, uh, Jungian theory, I'm a Jungian psychologist, in Jungian theory, when you can't change something, the question is what I have to learn from this? Because if you can't change and you are there, it's because you can change your life from there. So, for example, now uh, the world is, is ill, the world is ill, we are living a pandemic. So some people are trying to do the same and they are becoming tired, it's impossible. But some people could stop their lives and ask what I have to learn from this and they start changing their lives. So the, the main point is <coughs> sometimes we are fighting with challenges problems, something change in our life. And the, the, the clever person is stop fighting and put face to face with their problems, their challenges, their, their, their uh, troubles and ask, what do you want uh, to teach me? what I need to learn from you. But I believe, Sue, this is a, a difficult point because if I don't understand myself, if I don't have this a minimum self-knowledge, I don't, I can't understand what the world, the problems, the troubles are trying to teach me. If I think I'm I'm amazing, if I think the problem is the world, the problem is the other person, I am perfect, I am marvelous, I don't understand what the life is trying to teach me because I'm marvelous, I'm wonderful. So when we start that process, the self-knowledge, we, we can understand our troubles, we can understand our disabilities. And when we understand our disabilities, we understand the world is coming perfectly in our points, trying to teach us in our points. So this is fantastic because you understand everything happening in the world or around us is not happening. How can I say acaso? Is no way acaso. By chance. Hmm? Chance. Is not chance. It's not chance. Yeah. Not by it's chance. Not yeah. chance. It's, it's not chance. Is because I need to live that experience. So this is fantastic, because I need to live that experience. So oh, I open my mind. I I open uh, my mind and ask what the world 
what the life, what these problems uh, can teach me. And with this, we, we change our lives, we improve ourselves, okay? Thank you, Marlon. Um, there is a comment from Alice. She say, this proves spirituality is not religion, it's science. Yes, Alice, I agree with you. Obviously, I agree. And, but I'm saying many times we talk about spirituality without science. We talk about the spirituality like uh, simple things in the world. And I know uh, I, I could notice in England with some friends, English friends, and we're talking about spirituality and they said, oh, no, this is ridiculous. This is, is not se serious. Yes, serious. 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 I said, why are you saying this? No trying to, to explain some ideas. And when I start to explain some ideas, some universities, some studies, they said, oh my God, this is very interesting. I have never heard about that. I said, tell me which spirituality you, you heard about that. And they said, no. And they have uh, many examples, the, we could say bad spirituality or bad approach or simple approach. So they, they told me uh, about many mediums, about many religions, many churches. Um, you can't believe that. In the same program, we are watching a program talking about spirituality, reincarnation, and life after that, death. And in the same program, they had a very good approach in science with universities and some ridiculous examples about spirituality. So I was talking to my boyfriend. I said, oh, please, please pay attention to this and don't pay attention to this because I don't believe this too. I think this is ridiculous and this is very nice. I said, yeah, oh, at least you understand this is ridiculous and this is nice. So I agree. This proves spirituality is not religion, it's science, but many times we can, we can do this properly. Thank you, Marla. Um, Jamie just comment here, say, thank you, Marla. I have really enjoyed the way you have combined the spiritual and psychological approach. It really resonates with me. Oh, good. Thank you, Jamie. Um, Jacqueline mentioned interesting discussion and another question that has come from Sue she says how does the collective human consciousness expand its awareness I don't know I'm sorry I love to say this it's easier <laughs> I think it's easier but I'm sorry, uh, I can't explain. In English, I could think, and the best way now is say, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, last question for tonight is come from Susan, Susan Brown. Absolutely enthralling talk, giving a whole new way of thinking. Thank you, Marlon. Oh, thank you, Susan. Cool. So um, what I would like to do now, um, we will close the questions there. Uh, I'd like to announce our next um, talk. So our next speaker is Charles Kemp, and he will be here with us. He will be talking with us from France. Um, and our next event is going to be on the 8th of October with Charles Kemp from France. Um, is there any closing remarks that Marlon, Louise or Laurie would like to make tonight before we go to Lawrence for the closing prayer? I've loved it, Marlon. Absolutely loved it. Thank no. you very much. Thank you, Laurie. Yeah. And yes, I believe 
I love that allegory about the the mind 50 years ago wasn't understood. So, yeah, fingers crossed in 50 years from now, spirituality will be hopefully much more understood. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Marlon made my job very easy, so I didn't really have to, to step in. No, I, I, I speak for English, so. <laughs> Thank you, Luis, to be here. Thank you, guys. So, Gabriel, just reading the last comment, he said, what a blessing life. It's always good watching you guys together talking about spiritism. Thanks a million for your time. On that note, with all good comments, I will hand it over to Lawrence for the closing prayer. Thank you. So once more, dear friends, draw into that silence within, that temple and shrine to those higher energies. And we give thanks for this evening we give thanks for this information shared. But most of all, we give thanks for the ability to join together this way, to enrich our hearts, our minds, our souls, and to walk hand in hand along the path of progress. And as this night draws to a close, we send out our love, our healing, our thoughts to wherever there is a need within this whole wide world. Amen. Um, so thank you once again, Marlon, for being here with us tonight. It's been a pleasure, and uh, I hope you come along again the next in future. And uh, I would like to say a good evening to everyone who has, has been watching us, and I look forward to see you on the 8th of October. Goodbye, and have a good night. <laughs>